Hi everybody, my name's Cherie. How are you? I hope you're having a great day. I just wanted to get on here and do our daily devotional. Today, <clears throat> excuse me, is on family values. And um, we're going to go over that today. And um, let's see, this will be for tomorrow. I make them a day ahead. That way I make sure I've got it up and running by in the morning. And um, I'm doing it today in the daytime. It's not dark in here right now. Um, because of the time change and stuff, we got some more daylight. So it's been pretty here today. The sun's a shining and it's been a nice day. So let me flip you around and get my eyeglasses on. And we'll read this devotional. And if you like it, give me a thumbs up. And um, give me a comment if you wish. And I appreciate all your comments. I've been reading them, and, and they're so encouraging. And I'm so glad this is something you all like and that you're, it's helping you out. And we give God all the glory for that. So let me uh, flip you around, and we'll get to the devotional. <clears throat> I still got that frog in my throat, and I'm so sorry. Okay, it says family values, and this is out of 1 Timothy 5.8. And this is uh, the Passion Translation. If a believer fails to provide for their own relatives when they are in need, they have compromised their convictions of faith and need to be corrected, for they are living worse than the unbelievers. So if you aren't taking care of your family and you know better because of faith, then you're worse than people that don't even believe because they might not even know better, but you do. So you've got to do better on that. And our devotion is giving to charity, volunteering at church, and helping out at a mission are all very important ways of expressing our faith. Why then does this scripture seem to be so harsh about not helping our own family out? God created the family unit, and even though sin has a way of making them dysfunctional, they are still an important part of who we are. They're also one of the best examples of unconditional love. The bond that you have with your family should be treasured. You're struggling with forgiveness. If you're struggling with forgiveness for a relative, ask Christ to help you. One of the best ways to, you can mend a relationship is by offering a word of kindness or a hand to help. You might be surprised at how quickly a situation can turn when you prioritize your family. And our act of kindness is run an errand for a family member who is busy. That's a great idea. I have an aunt that is older and I need to take her out to eat. And I have been uh, maybe shopping too and I've been waiting uh, for some nicer weather and we've got that this week. So I think this week I will have to give her a call and see if she's available to go get about to eat, maybe shop a little bit. I don't like to take her out if it's raining or snowing or anything like that or cloudy. I like to go out on a sunny day. So we'll be doing that soon, I hope. And, uh, and your family is so important. God created the family. Uh, we're to be there for each other and encourage each other. And, uh, you know, we're, we're all in it together. And I love my family. And I was adopted. But my family is my family. My aunts, uncles, cousins, everyone. They're my family. I don't even think about it as being adopted. I don't know if they do or not. But there is nothing that irks me anymore than hearing someone say, The adopted one. You know, like if somebody's got brothers and sisters, but they always have to point out the adopted one, you know, Sally, or the adopted one, Dan, you know. What is that? Why can't they just be Susie or Dan or whatever? Why do they have to be the adopted one? You know, I hate that. That is so stupid, and it's just separating these people from their family in a way that's crazy. Please don't do that. If you're doing that, these people are an individual Okay, so call them by their name. You don't have to put adopted in front of it. What difference does that make? They're their son, their daughter, their niece, their nephew, a person. They're a human being. So please stop doing that. If I could start on something, that would be it. Quit doing that. 
every time I hear somebody say that, I want to just get on my bandwagon and let them have it. <laughs> because that's special to me. I hate that. You know, uh, there is no excuse for it. I don't care what you're talking about. You know, um, there just isn't. So please, please stop doing that. That individual is a human being, okay? They're not the adopted one, you know, that's <clears throat> that's horrible. So please don't do that. That's really disrespectful to the person, and uh, it, it just needs to stop. So that's my little soapbox speech for the day. <laughs> I had a great aunt that used to have, that had a grandson, and his name was Alfred. And she would always say, and, and Bob's son, you know, the adopted one, Alfred. Anytime she would talk about him, she'd go, the adopted one, Alfred. And I got on to her one day, and I was, I was young. And, I mean, it even bothered me then. <clears throat> and I didn't even know these people that well because they didn't live around us. But she was all prim and proper and stuff. And, I, I you know, I guess I told my mom before that I hate it when she does that. And, you know, and, and when she did that, Mom looked at me because I knew she thought, oh, boy, one of these days, and that was the day. I said, Aunt so-and-so, I said, you cannot do I said, why do you do that? Why do you call him the adopted son, Alfred? Just call him Alfred. That's his name. You don't have to have a label. I mean, even then, I guess it's just a pet peeve of mine. I mean, even when I was younger, I was probably in my teens, maybe even younger than that, maybe 12, I don't know, but I don't remember. But anyway... Oh, I hated that. And Mom said, that bothers her when you do that because she's adopted, you know. I said, I, I just don't like that. Nobody should do that. That's crazy. You know, why don't you just go, oh, and that, you know, the fat one so-and-so or the skinny one so-and-so or the stupid one so-and-so or the ugly one so-and-so. I mean, seriously, it's the same difference. Stop doing it. Quit putting a label on people. Call them by their name. It's what they give them a name for. <laughs> That was my soapbox speech for the day. <laughs> but anyway, thank you for watching. And remember, you know, if you got people in your family, hang out with them. I'll tell you what we do is I've started, um, we've done it once or twice, maybe just once so far, I don't remember. I think just once. We have a big family on my dad's side. And so it's hard for us to all get together. We do it at funeral homes, you know, that's about it. Funerals and weddings, and we don't have very many weddings, so it's funerals, maybe, mostly. And and every time we're like, we've got to start getting together, you know, the only time we see each other is at the funeral home, you know. Well, nobody ever does nothing about it. So I started meeting at a restaurant. I started scheduling a meeting at a restaurant where they've got it like a party room. And we went, and we all had a good time visiting and seeing each other and everybody's kids and grandkids and blah, blah, blah. We had a real good time, and I've got to schedule one of those now that the weather's breaking and that uh, we can get together again because I think everybody really enjoyed it. I know I did. So um, anyway, you know, get together with your family however you need to do it. Call them, text them, you know, write them. I even have letters that I get from my family sometimes that lives away from here. So, um, you know, just, uh, just include your family in your life. And if there's someone you need to forgive, forgive them. If someone needs to forgive you, then ask for their forgiveness, and maybe you all can work it out. And everybody's family's different, and your situation's different, so you know what you need to do there. But um, just, you know, just uh, try to make it better however you can, and just talk to God about it. You know, and let him know what's going on in your heart, out loud. That way, um, you know, you can get a handle on it. But anyway, I hope that you all are having a great day. And remember, if you want to, to like this video and subscribe to my channel. It's free, don't cost a thing. It just lets you know if you click, click the little bell that comes up that says all. That just uh, notifies you when I put a video up in case it's something you'd want to watch. So, um, anyway, remember to live, love, laugh, and laugh some more because laughter is the best medicine. And I'll see you all back here real soon. You all have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.